Hey, this is Mike Taylor. Today I'm going to show you how to install the B1i framework for SAP Business One. The B1i framework runs your dashboards, it runs your mobile scenarios, and it can also do custom integration scenarios. But for today, I'm going to show you how to install the framework, how to troubleshoot it, how to troubleshoot the dashboards, how to install your SSL certificates, and how to roll it out to a mobile phone. Let's get started. <laughs> So what we're going to do first is make sure that user account control is off. I always turn this off, control panel, user accounts, change user account control settings set to never notify, restart your machine. Never, in my opinion, don't try to mess with this. It will cause issues. You, you may or may not be able to confirm that, but I have done so many installs of this and it just makes things a lot easier. Secondly, you want to make sure that your server browser is on. So the server browser must be on. Make sure that it's on automatic and that it starts up properly every time you restart the machine. The next thing you want to check is that you do not have dynamic ports on. Make sure that you come in here after your installation and clear out the dynamic ports and manually configure it to 1433. This will make your life a lot easier and it'll make everything go much smoother for installation. I always hard code everything to 1433. So that was uh, SQL Server Configuration Manager. Go to SQL Server Network Configuration. Go to Protocols for, in this case, mine's called MSSQL Server. TCP IP and set those here accordingly. So blank for here and TCP ports 1433. So those things need to be done first. The next thing you want to do is scan your ports. There's no reason to do an install and struggle around for so long when you have some other program running on one of your ports and it's just causing issues. So what you want to do here is run this. I will put this in the description netstat hyphen A, pipe find, and then this will scan and tell you what is going to be on that port. So we're going to sit here for a couple seconds. This can take, you know, sometimes it can take a minute. Do, 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 do. Gonna probably edit this. So it's funny because it seems like if there is, if there are results, it's going to be fast. If there are no results, it is going to take And we're back. So there you can see there are no other processes running on 2099. You also want to scan 8080, which is the regular connection port to the B1i framework, and you want to scan 8443 to make sure that nothing is there. We can switch ports if you need to. I'm not going to cover that in this series but uh, there's some documentation. If you want me to do a video on how to switch ports, I can do that. I'm just not going to take the time today. Make sure you scan. The scan, uh, these things are laying the foundation for what you're doing later. So you could just go ahead and take your chances and install the framework, but uh, it's better to know upfront what's going to happen. Okay, close that. So the installation files for B1i are always going to come with the patch level you have just installed. So in this case, I'm on 9.2 PL03. 32-bit packages, it's only 32-bit. Technology, right-click, run as administrator. I'm not really sure if you need to do that. Guys, if you are enjoying this video so far and you're going to get some use out of it, please subscribe to my channel. Leave a like, leave a comment, ask me questions. I'll check every comment out and uh, see if I can answer questions and or potentially make additional videos to help you. I just want to help you out. I want to help general consultants make their life easier. So here we are. Click Next. We're going to install all the features. I'm going to leave it in the default folder. I'm going to just set my password. Standard one there. So I am on 2014 database server, database port. It's going to add ifserve database username SA. Enter your 
as a password. Click Next. On premise 2014, sometimes things happen between that screen and this one, so we want to check it again. Mike, think 1433. Yep, this is where my license server is. I'm just going to re enter this again, just kind of superstitious. Jayco path, that's good. You can actually check this path if you want. I know that it's correct. The B1I user is inside SAP Business One. You have to go to SAP Business One and set the password. The B1I uses a specific user. The B1I password has a special license, and you need to set it to what I just use is 1234 and just set that there. But you have to go into your database and set that. If you don't, you're not going to be able to connect. So I have to do that. I'm not going to show you how to do that. You should be able to do that. Payroll support. We don't need it. Uh, mobile solution. I'll leave that on because I'm going to be doing it. All this. Here we go. So guys, this is going to install. Half of the battle, I think, really is getting those things done. UAC off server browser on, dynamic ports turned off, and scanning your ports. Those things are going to lay the foundation for what you're going to do today. If you are not sure of your SA password, verify it first. Always check that. You want to eliminate every roadblock you can come up against at each step. There are so many moving parts that you need to be confident in which ones are not working properly. Uh, as you're moving forward and this will help in the final product when you actually go to do the connection then you can troubleshoot more confidently so I'm just gonna skip ahead here okay we're all done here everything is finished installing so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to log in you can go here and uh, we're gonna do setup just start your uh, start menu and click setup it's weirdly named uh, but this is the setup for the event viewer looks good looks good 8080 b1i admin test the connection looks good looks good okay so that's set up. We're going to do run. It's just called run. Don't use Windows run, but it's just called run. I don't know why they just called them set up and just called them run. That's done. Okay, what we want to do here is go here and make sure event sender is started. So what we're going to do is you can just type integration framework and it's going to run here. So this is one way to do it. Um, you could just type 12701, whatever your IP is, and then 80. Logging in. It's going to take a minute for the cockpit. The cockpit lo pit loads up here. We're just fresh, brand new, so we don't have much information here. We're going to slip, uh, skip over to the SLD, System Landscape Directory. We want to jump in. And the thing is, we don't see any of our uh, databases here. So I'm going to go here and then back to maintenance. And I still don't see anything. So what I do is at this point, um, you know, maybe you can wait forever, but I uh, just short circuit the system. What you want to do is shut down the services, and there are four services related to the framework. Integration service, stop it. <coughs> Excuse me. Event sender, stop that. DI proxy service monitor, DI proxy service. Minimize that. We're going to go to SQL Management Studio. In. Databases, SBO common, you want a new query on here. And what you're going to do is use this exact query here, these two queries. I'm going to put this in the description below. So this is going to delete the tables that list the companies 
when you go to log in and you push choose company. So when you go into log in the SAP client and you say choose company, those uh, uh, databases there are we're going to kind of delete those entries and then we're going to kickstart the system to rebuild those so this is kind of scary to delete but it's no big deal so you can see there's a few rows affected that's it that's all and go back to your services kick start your services back on start start them up start up the four services here go to your client From choose company, you want to push refresh right here. And now you want to go back and log into your integration framework. So same exact thing here. Log in. And what you're going to see here is under the SLD, you're going to start to see things being listed. OK, there we go. We have all three. So I'm going to use this one, SAP Business Objects. That's my database. I'm going to go down here, click Test Connection. <clears throat> if you get a warning here, something like uh, this, a background process template divide, this just means I went to Test Connection too quickly. This is not something you need to worry about. So usually you just close it. Click it again here. Perfect, it connected successfully. So I do not worry about this generally. My JDBC is good. I don't generally connect that. This test connection should be enough in order for you to have everything working properly. So if you have you know, all this stuff set up, you have your UAC turned off, all those things I mentioned before, and then you do all these things and you relist everything properly. Um, that is going to be the difference between people that get this working and people that don't get this working. You have to do, uh, you have to lay the groundwork in order to get this working properly. So you want to go ahead now and log into your SAP Business One database. You might want to wait about 30 seconds here. So this is my cockpit and my dashboard widgets. Everything has already been enabled. Um, you can see these are custom widget or custom dashboards that I've done, but they connect properly. You can see everything's working. So that's a success. <clears throat> um, if you have other issues with this, a lot of the times just rebuilding the tables will take care of it. You need to make sure that you've done those things I said. I, I keep mentioning them, they're so important. Make sure that your licenses are set correctly. Bah. Licenses are set correctly. So for your B1I, they need this B1I indirect MSS. Make sure that you set your user password for B1I. Make sure that you have the password never expires. And if you've done all these things, this should work properly and you'll have everything working and all hunky-dory. If you get a warning in here that says couldn't load plugin, there's a very simple way to fix that. I will link the article below and I should take care of it in about five minutes. So that is not a bad sign. Um, if you're still having issues, you have to look for the, the B1I troubleshooting. Honestly, with the newer versions, that should do it unless your ports are blocked. If your ports are blocked, make sure we're going to switch those. I'm not going to do that in today's video. So the next thing you need to do in order to set up the system for mobile is go to Scenarios, Control. I go to Control anyway. Make sure that you have SAP B1 Mobile enabled with this checkbox, otherwise you have to check it and activate it, otherwise there's no point in you doing anything because the scenario is not even activated. Next thing you need to do is make sure that you have a user that has something set up. So in this case I want to make them a mobile user, I need a phone number, 
and I need some sort of mobile device that is definitely not a good mobile device ID. The mobile device ID is going to come from the app itself. So when you run the app for the first time, you can send your mobile device ID via email, send that device ID and update it for that one user that you're using. The mobile phone also needs to be exact. You cannot have an approximation where you have some have hyphens and some have not. So usually when I'm testing, I'll just do one, two, three, four for the mobile phone number because the string has to match exactly. So you have to have mobile user connect uh, checked. One, two, three, four is your mobile phone number. As long as it matches, you should be fine. No special characters. Mobile device ID, get this from the actual app and you should be good. Next thing you need to do is make sure that particular user has the B1i dope, the B1i license. So I'm in manager B1i. I just make sure anytime I assign an SAP license, I also sign a B1i license. It just makes life easier because later in life, if you need to change anything, it's annoying to kick people off and to modify them. With the manager, it's not a big deal because you can just. Uh, work with it while you're logged in as them, but for the other users you actually have to kick them out. So make sure you have the B1i license, you have the password set up, you have the indirect license set up for B1i, the B1i password matches. If you line all these things up and your ports are clear and your firewall is off, that's one thing, another thing I forgot to mention, firewall needs to be off, or you need to make exceptions incoming and outgoing for 2099. 8080 and 8443, assuming those are the ports you used. The next step is to get port 8443 forwarded from the outside world, i.e. from your router, into your SAP box. So 8443 is going to be an SSL port and you only want to use an SSL port. You don't want to expose 8080 because then there's no security. We're about to install a uh, an SSL certificate which will keep your SSL connection uh, secure. If you're just using 8080 it's it's potentially vulnerable and a lot less secure. Um, with the new versions of the app anyways you have to have an SSL certificate so uh, let's go about doing that. So we're going to minimize that. So I wrote an article if you go to www.battleshipcobra.com and just look for B1I, you're going to find the SSL certificate installation guide. You can do it that way, but I've also just made a an automatic system that will just run all the same scripts exactly how I would have done them anyways. So we go auto SSL. You can get this in the notes below. I'll link it down there. <clears throat> this is mostly tuned for Windows 2012 and uh, newer servers. Um, if you're trying to install this on like 8.81, <clears throat> excuse me, on like, you know, Windows 2008 R2, um, I can't really help you. I'm not going to provide much support for that. You need to upgrade. That's all there to say about that. <clears throat> so the only thing you need to do here is to run this as administrator. Enter the certificate name. So in this case, I'm just going to call it Mike. The domain is where you're going to connect, so it can be an external IP. <clears throat> Otherwise, it can be, you know, um, mobile.battleshipcobra.com, and then this would be just a redirected URL to the IP. Hopefully, you have a static IP. If you do not have a static IP, there's virtually no point in doing this. You can try doing dynamic. Um, dynamic uh, domains that will redirect it and all that stuff. In my opinion, it's just going to cause trouble. You need a static IP to do this. In this case, I'm just going to use mobile.battleshipcobra.com. So this is going to check everything here. It's going to check the name. It's going to check the domain. It's going to check the certificate path and that everything you have is installed. If you need any of these things, you can type 100, push enter. It's going to launch and it's going to load my article. So I loaded Today I want to answer one of your questions about how do you... Dang. <clears throat> so it's going to launch my article. Here's my article with all the steps and all the things you're supposed to do. Again, you can copy and paste this and do this all manually, or if you need help, um, go back and refer to that. Otherwise, you can type uh, 102, 
sorry, uh, yeah, 102 is going to get you the SSL creation tool. It's an open source tool. Uh, 101 you're going to need to. It's a Visual C++ uh, reference there. So you need all those things. I have them all set up. Everything checks out. If you need to edit anything, um, you can actually just check this README and edit this directly. So sometimes you're going to have to check the different paths. Make sure that you follow this in the README. Again, I'm, I'll, I'll try to provide support, but um, if people are trying to do this on 8.82 or 8.81, get, get a life and upgrade. I know there's reasons that you can't upgrade, but you should upgrade. So when you're ready, we're going to go to the danger zone. 999 to run, 000 for exit, 999. Are you sure? Are you really sure? Here we go. So this is going to do everything I would do, and I literally just click, and I click, and I click. This just enter SAP B1IP exactly how it's shown there. Same thing. It's good. So it's going to move things, Let's fix up the key store. Literally, this should do everything for you. Shutting down the services. I wrote this because this just saves me a lot of time. So now I go 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Five, four, three, two, one. Launch them again. I guess I could do a counter in there, but you know how lazy am I? Okay, we're all good. So this is going to tell you where it is. So you have to email this file to the iOS or Android device. No, you cannot see this on a desktop client. You can't see it. You can't forward it. It's just not going to work. So you have to send it direct to the user and you have to have that email account on your phone or on your iPhone, your iPad or your Android device and you have to click the attachment and install it right into the system. If you don't do that, right into your profiles on the device. If you don't do that, it's not going to work. On your phone, double click the home screen and close your SAP Business One make sure that it's closed. If it's not closed, um, it might not pick up the new certificate, so just close that before you relaunch it. So now that you have your SSL certificate set up, you have the framework set up, you have the SSL certificate on the device, the dashboards are working already, you're confident that V1i is running, you have your port forwarded, um, everything is good. Now what you want to do is download the Business One app on the device. I'm just going to assume iOS here. I'll link the user guides below in the description. On your device, go to Settings, Business One. Again, assuming it's an iOS device. Enter this information, mobile.battleshipcobra.com with the port. SSL has to be on. Company database needs to be exactly what the database is. You cannot get lazy. You have to be very, very specific in every case, in all the server names and everything. It needs to be exact. User code, phone number 1234. You see, it's 1234. needs to match. Whatever it is, it needs to match. It doesn't actually have to be your phone number. In this case, this is just for testing. Email device ID on, then run the Business One app. So what happens is, I don't even remember where to get this out of the settings, the right email, you know, the right device ID, if you know, congratulations. But you could just use this email device ID, especially if it's a user. When they run it, they'll be prompted to send their device ID. So when they send their device ID directly to you, then you don't have to kind of guess at it and do not let them send you a screenshot. Do not let them do that. And don't let them even type it out. Make them send you that actual email because that's going to be exactly what you need. And you know that being specific will eliminate error and eliminate time banging your head on a table. So make sure they send you the exact email, not just something that they typed up. So they're going to run that Business One app send you that device ID. You're going to take that device ID, go back in here and put that information in here. Whatever. It's like a long string of stuff. It's really long. This is why you don't want to have to. Something like, something like that. Go back and update that. Now you can tell them to go back, double click their device, the home button, and swipe up on the Business One app to close it completely. Then rerun it 
and they should get a good connection. It's going to sit there for a second, it's going to twirl around, and then what's going to happen is the whole screen is going to go zoop and change it around. Now you could do this yourself, just connect the same way, send yourself the SSL certificate, and do all that for testing before you send this out. In fact, I really recommend doing that, especially as a consultant. You want to make sure that you're not just kind of sending it to the uh, customer. You should be able to access it outside just the same as they can. So usually what I'll do is I'll go to a business partner or something, I'll set a remark or change something quickly, go back into the database, and uh, check that everything has changed. If something is not working at this point, you probably need to start at step one. Go back in, delete everything. Literally go into your SQL, delete this database. Just get rid of it. Delete it. Uninstall right from your control panel. You're going to uninstall everything uh, from programs and features. So you want to uninstall it integration framework and also go so far as to actually delete the folder so you want to go here delete this folder also you want to clear out percentage temp percentage clear this out you'll have this SBO Bob this thing clear everything out of there Clear everything, restart, restart from scratch. Scan your ports, make sure your browser's uh, going, make sure the firewall's not there. You gotta clear the way for this to work, otherwise you're just gonna be troubleshooting, pulling out your hair, and you don't wanna do that. So um, those are my steps. I'm gonna put everything in the description. I'm gonna put the, or the resources I mentioned. I'm gonna put my auto SSL tool. Go ahead and use it, give it to anybody you want. I couldn't care less. Uh, give me credit, that'd be nice. At least follow me, leave a like. Thank you guys so much. If you have topics uh, for other videos you want me to see, um, you know, just leave it in the comments. If you have any comments or questions on what I'm doing, leave it in the comments. I'm going to read everything. Like, share, subscribe. Thank you guys so much. You're going to see more from me. You're going to see more useful videos like this. Have a great day.